Stu Cowan here with Dave Stubbs in the press box at the Bell Centre after tonight's 4-1 to win by the Canadians over the Detroit Red Wings. They're now 6-0. and uh, Are we going to see an 82-0 and season in the NHL, Dave? See all the banners hanging behind us, Stu? Are the Canadians making room for another one? I mean, hey, it's very, it's, it's very, very early, and every man in the dressing room is going to tell you that, but the interesting thing for me is that last year we heard oftentimes the word adversity used, and that would be in relation to how the Canadians were struggling with injuries, whatever else. Well, the only adversity they've had so far this year was tonight, and that was for 2 minutes and 57 seconds. It was the first time all season they've trailed a game. They trailed it by one goal and until they tied and then got on the way to the 4-1 win. So this team is doing some wonderful things out of the gate. These are irreplaceable points. You will never be able to take these points away when you get deeper in the season. So it's really important the team's doing this now. And obviously the city of Montreal feels absolutely wonderful about what this team is doing. If we were in Toronto, there'd be tinfoil Stanley Cups going down uh, Young Street absolutely. right now, I think. But again, depth. Four lines, the fourth line tonight of Mitchell, Smith, Pelly, Flynn, 12 minutes of ice time each. They wear teams down. They're wearing good teams down. The Detroit Red Wings are a good hockey team, and they wore them down tonight. They are, and that's going to be very, very important, Stu. If this team remains healthy, if they can actually do that, if Terry can roll these four lines and can keep his gunners fresh, I mean, that's going to be massively important for this team. So it's really interesting, too, how this team is invested in itself. I talked to Dale Weiss after the game. Uh, he had another terrific game tonight. I think he was 5-0 and on face-offs. At one point, he had uh, a team leading four shots on goal. I think he finished one behind Gallagher. Uh, he just said, look, it doesn't matter who's scoring the goals. If it's Patchy Reddy or if it's Brian Flynn, it doesn't matter. We are all standing. We are all cheering the guys on the team. And so they are all totally into this thing together. There are no clicks. This, is, I think, is the tightest dressing room. Every, everybody says, I mean, players yeah. always say that, but I think that they honestly mean it here. Uh, I don't know what Canadians fans are going to complain about. Even the power play looked good tonight. They seem to have gone to a 1-3-1 one, one formation. It's not just get it back to Markov and Subban at the point. They seems to be coming more off the sideboards. Jeff Petrie's goal, PK was set up like this. Yep. He looked at him, took the shot, put it through, and he was saying that in the room afterwards, Petrie was saying they're trying to get more of the offense coming off the boards and doing that. And David Deherne is standing in front of the net. It's exactly what you need. You need a power play that's going to be less predictable. Last year, let's face it, I mean, the teams just knew. They said, okay, the Habs have a power play. Here's how we're going to defend it. We're going to defend the big shot from PK. We're going to defend maybe something coming from Markov. They're going to try to throw it to the front of the net, see if they can get something junky. Now the Canadians are showing more creativity. It's taking them a bit of time. Fans were a little stressed out at the beginning when the team wasn't doing well, but maybe tonight breaks the ice a little bit. Maybe this gives them a little something to build on. So, you know, special teams are so huge in today's NHL, right? But yeah. you look at how the Habs are going here, and I mean, they just, they are winning games in a very positive way. They're finding ways to win games, and that's been very impressive so far. And Brendan Gallagher is not huge, but another Brendan Gallagher goal. I was joking, I said, he's Dennis the Menace on skates. He's just missing the slingshot in his back pocket. Crashes into the goal. I spoke to him in the room afterwards, and I said, what goes through your mind when you're going through there? And it doesn't really, not a lot, I guess. He yeah, just, he just puts his head down, he goes to the net, he said he saw the opportunity. He had no idea if it was a good goal or not. I mean, he was buried into the goalie's pads. And he said in on the bench, the guys were all razzing him, giving him a good time. And he said it'd be nice to actually see one of his goals going in that one time. That's the thing about, and you even see the way he reacted finally when they announced that it was a good goal. I mean, he almost couldn't believe it himself. And the thing about Gallagher, of course, is he's the, his body is the color of the blue paint that he's spending all of yeah. his night in. It's He's just getting beaten and he's being vaporized in the crease every time he goes in there. But, you know, that is a classic. You're right. As you, as you say, it's a classic Brendan Gallagher goal. I love the fact that both Gallagher and the puck wind up in the net. And it's very important, I think, that a guy like Gallagher can get in there and do that work. And you're right, it, it sets a little bit of a template for, the, yeah. for the, the, the smaller guys on this team. Everyone is in there paying the price. Their little guys play big. And I keep joking, Brendan Gallagher needs to get a paint company ad, right, for blue yeah. paint, sitting, <laughs> sitting in the blue paint. Absolutely. Uh, we're back at the Bell Center Tuesday night. The St. Louis Blues will be here, and the Canadians will go for the lucky 7-0.